what I do with my material. This is an organic material squashed into the clay. And then I uh, mix it all up and I have all the rubbish in my clay <laughs> that I use. So I like my clay to be literally uh, the product of my environment. Literally the material that I work with is, is just sucked up everything. So I get a handful of that and I, and I put it on the sculptures. And as well as um, being a really interesting surface, it holds everything together and makes things much stronger. This is my wax room. This is where uh, um, I make waxes and the idea is to come from other sculptures. It's the same figure that had the stone on them. You might see later the stone. So you can see here that I've used them in a different way. I've encrusted him with grasses and wood and I've also given it a sort of a, a back, which is almost like a sort of, I suppose, like a giant rucksack or something. Um, I haven't worked out what it all means yet, but it sort of seems to me to be sort of something carrying sort of some of natural structure on his back. Some attempt to make sense of something, and uh, I might cast this, I might not. Who knows? It's almost like a, a mannequin, but an every man, a protein man, that's being slowly adorned with uh, stone. So here's a flint casting the bronze, a lovely edge. It's almost like a mechanical edge, it's almost like a weapon or a tool. Uh, as well as a man carrying his tools or whatever, or um, his house on his back, as it were, I always find them to be almost like organs, and they're almost like vitrified organs, which I kind of find interesting. Uh, I haven't worked out what all that means yet, but again, this is why uh, making work like this is, is interesting. On the surface here, you see, um, or here on this figure here, this walking man, um, which is a, to be the leader of a set of five walking men. He needs a base at the moment, and he'll be finished off a bit more. But you can see on here, there's lots of these sort of things, these sort of marks, these sort of, uh, uh, what we call in the trade, feathers, which are where the mould has cracked in the process and the bronze has found the crack. And uh, again, if I gave this to a foundry, they'd clean all this up quickly so I wouldn't see it because they'll admit to having cracks in moulds. But for me, it really adds another dimension to the sculpture. And in certain places, almost like here in Chin, yeah. it could almost be uh, a, a landscape in Suffolk. It could almost be a hedge line or whatever. So I, I really like the sort of micro-macro elements of the whole thing. This is called snap, and it's the idea of snapping sort of action um, using real sticks that are burnt out in the, in the process. I love the idea of the environment coming into my sculpture. I love the idea that my uh, process allows me to use natural materials by burning out the thing that kill me. And that figure is going to be uh, made into an 18 foot wide figure, uh, the elements of which are down here. You can see the first cast of. Um, a life size figure starting. Here we have the legs and uh, a, a crotch. Um, and again, this is raw casting. This is just as it's come out. We can see even here, there's bits of stick in the sort of belt area of the sculpture, which for me is almost like a holster. I like the idea of this almost like tools and holding implements uh, set within the sculpture. And again, there's loads of little cracks and stuff and little explosions of bronze like this one here. The little moments where a bronze has found a pocket and just filled it. Um, much like, funny enough, flint does in chalk. I mean, if you think about a chalk sediment, chalk field, uh, flint is only ever an organic sort of shell oil that has filled these gaps, and you get these weird inclusions, these weird flint shapes, which are, in a sense, very similar to this. This is finding gaps in a sort of a, a plaster mold. Here we have maybe a direction I'd like to develop. Um, uh, it's called Rush, and it's a character walking in bedecked and, and immersed in a meshed in a organic material. You can see here how the little bits of the stick uh, are cast in the bronze. Again, burnt out in the kiln and replaced with bronze. So this is an organic sculpture that was made out of wax and grasses, and then I just literally invested it in hope for the best. Uh, this is based on, funnily enough, the starting point for this was the, uh, a very famous sculpture uh, picture of Bigfoot disappearing in the uh, Canadian jungle in a film. And he's walking like that, looking um, out to the lens. And I like the idea of this disguise, um, this character um, disguising himself or, uh, in an environment or maybe camouflaging himself. But I like the ambiguity. I was trying to get ambiguity about the idea of maybe there's a deceit or, uh, or a complete sort of... Uh, uh, immersement and uh, uh, product of, of, of an environment.